Hey, what's going on? Devin Studs here from Die Precision. I'm here at Lone Wolf Paintball. I'm going to go over the uh, Die LTR. Ooh, what are you going to teach us? So I'm, I'm just going to go a little break, basic breakdown, you know, kind of show you how to take the thing apart, what to look for. Um, one of the nice things with the LTR is it's uh, a simple product, easy to use. One thing you'll see is there's really not a whole lot to do or press on the outside. You've got one button here, um, turns it on, turns it off. That's, that's the only button you're going to really have to ever press. Um, the shark fin here on the outside, if you do ever have or a ball, funky ball gets in the hopper and jams, you can pull this back and it retracts the rotor inside and, you know, will help to unjam anything if it does jam. Um, to, when you first start, you get your LTR out of the box. If you want to put your batteries inside, you'll, you'll lift your lid up. You've got this locking tab here on the back. You lift this up. It allows you to push this button in and the whole top end just pops off. You got your lid, your whole top carrier, whole top shell assembly. Inside, you got your center rotor arm, um, the whole rotor assembly, which kind of helps to shove paintballs into your gun as fast as possible. Um, it's it's going to be able to, so that way any gun can keep up at a high consistent rate of fire. You got your spring wrap here, so this is what helps when you get lower on paint. The spring wrap increases, the, the spring underneath there pushes the paint back into the rotors so you don't miss, miss a beat unless you just forget to reload. Um, the front tab here, if you push this down, lifts this whole end up, and this whole thing comes off. You've got two red tabs, push these in. And from there, you've got your whole assembly for the whole kind of rotor assembly. This is what is used to, to shove paint in your gun as quickly as possible. Um, and then you've got your gearbox and, and the bottom rotor. So there's not a whole lot to it. Three AA batteries goes inside here. Um, you do have on the back of the gearbox, there is this larger, uh, it's a quarter inch Allen key. This Allen key can adjust the tension if you do want to increase or decrease the tension um, from the hopper. Um, you really don't have to mess with this out of the box. Um, where it's at is, is a good setting. Um, there are obviously always people that like to, to tinker with stuff, but um, you really don't, don't need to touch that. Um, the biggest thing that I would say to, to keep an eye on long term, especially if you're playing with a quick feed, because um, if you're playing with a quick feed and you're filling your pod, paint gets in there as well as any kind of dirt or any little stuff, pieces of grass, anything they work their way. And you know, over time, um, you might start to see little pieces of, of rock or sand, depending on where you're playing, get into the gears. Um, that would be the biggest thing that I would say to make sure of if you've had a, a, an LTR or even a rotor for a long period of time is, is keeping the gears clean will make sure that you're not gonna have issues with this at all. Um, that's the, the one thing that, you know, I see if, you know, especially if people are at events like, hey, I'm having troubles with my hopper. It's just not feeding as good. You know, it, it, it hits a spot or it, it bumps over it, and, you know, and you open it up and there's a little little piece of sand or, or a little piece of, of rock that has gotten into one of these gears. Um, so, you know, what you can use is a small little toothbrush, you know, clean it off, just make sure everything's clean and ready to go. Um, putting everything back together, make sure that you have this shark fin forward. Um, start with the... Uh, the back end of the gearbox going down towards the uh, the push button. Before goes, you get too far with that, yeah. um, the only electronic parts are that gearbox, correct? Correct. All the electronics in here, you've got uh, a circuit board and a motor inside, um, along with uh, a couple different gears um, and your, your battery pack. So if I take that out, essentially I could stick the rest of it in a wash tub or in my sink to clean out. Yeah, really you get in your wash tub. Um, you know, I've definitely been at events where people have taken taken the gearbox out and thrown everything else into a dishwasher. You know, turn the dishwasher on a cycle, um, clean everything off that way. Um, you can duck it into a bucket of water. Um, you can go out and you know and clean it off, hose it off. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that was for sure the only part that's electronic and can't be submerged. Or yeah, get wet in general. I mean, I mean, in saying that, this is also something that if it did get wet, it wouldn't be the end of the day. Um, being that it's a hopper, we've we've kind of wanted to make sure that it, it could withstand it. Um, there's there's an interesting video that uh, that I put out uh, when the ro original rotor was released on a on a durability test, hmm. and uh, Billy Wing actually taking the gearbox and submitting this in in just a water or or dropping the the bottom shell in water, and the hopper still works. Um, it's not something that it's, you really should be doing, 
but it's something that happens just to prove that if you're playing out in the rain, you're not going to have any problems with it. Yeah, don't don't sink the the gearbox and then do a warranty claim because it won't get covered, guys. Um, so you said shark fin had to go forward, yeah. so towards the neck. Yeah, so the shark fin forward. Um, sorry, you lock this in place. It goes back out. So the shark fin forward, and all this does is making sure that it's in front of this gear here. So when you pull the shark fin back, you you can see that piece rotating. Okay. It actually rotates this this uh, cheese gear on the outside. Um, okay. So when we get all together, so you start, you've got your, the, start with your red piece with the white gears, the actual bottoms right there. We've got your rotor center. It's got a resist tab on it. So this does help for, you know, uh, ball jams or balls sticking together. And then you got your top carrier, kind of goes on there. You can pull this, uh, pull that shark fin. You can see when you pull the shark fin, it moves that red center arm backwards. Um, lock those red tabs in place. And with this carrier, you put start with the nose in down, pop it in, and it locks in, and you're good to go. For the top shell, there's a little key slot for the nose. Slide it down, push the back, push that in, and you're ready to go. Yeah, out there and play. I mean, it's a pretty simple um, hopper. Um, for the price point, for where it's at, I mean, there's nothing that's going to beat it on the market. Uh, if you guys are interested in how to change the rain lid into a speed feed or a quick feed, uh, Tony did do a video on that. So we're not going to put Devin through the process and here. Um, other than cleaning and changing batteries, is is there really any maintenance to do? I mean, do those gear, gears wear, wear out? No, the springs I mean... On the the ramp in the back. There, I mean, there's there's really nothing, just everything, keeping it clean. Um, the battery life on this is really well, really good. I mean, you may not even have to replace batteries for a whole year. Obviously, it depends on how often you're playing. Um, and the batteries you buy. If you guys buy crappy dollar store batteries, shame on you, but. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of get what you pay for with that, with, especially with the batteries, you know, yeah. like those bulk deal batteries are a really good deal. They don't always work too well. Oh, here's a good question for you that we get a lot. Um, if so still using double A's, but is there a preference from die or in your opinion, even between like good energizer, regular double A's versus rechargeable double A's? So I personally stay away from rechargeable batteries. Um, I've definitely noticed they don't work as well. They're not as quick to the, to the go. Um, and with the battery life, you're not replacing batteries so often to where it's going to be something that I think is a worthwhile adjustment, right? Okay. I think you'll see more disadvantages using rechargeable batteries than if you were to use a standard, you know, just Energizer or Duracell battery. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a question we get all the time from people. Like, should I be using rechargeables or regulars? And we say regulars just because they're inexpensive and most fields have them and you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, uh, it's just curious. Uh, yeah, I can't think of much else. I mean, this thing, I've had mine for years, and I know some guys are still playing with the original rotor, which this is based off of from... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's some of the stuff's been been gone away. Like, you don't have the windows in here, um, and it's it's molded logos instead of having a batch of six on. But, I mean, it's a very... It's something that's going to be durable. You can throw it around, drop it. It's not going to break. You don't have to worry about replacing shells or, or anything else. Like, it's basically just making sure you keep it clean, and you have good batteries inside and you won't have any issues. Oh, there we go. There's a question. So say I have a, a, a vintage rotor, mm -hmm. right? The, before it became the LTR, will that tray fit in my old rotor so I can use the old shell? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Everything inside here does fit into an, an original rotor. Okay. Are they interchangeable with the R2s? Uh, the R2 and the LTR are not interchangeable. They've got separate components. Um, I mean, there are a couple of pieces that you could you know, interchange um, to the R2. Um, I mean, but it's not just a shell. Chain yeah, just I mean, the whole like these pieces are some of the stuff that you could do, but the R2 has a completely different gearbox, um, different circuit board. It uses, a, you know, uh, it does use the uh, the motor is 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 the same motor, um, but it's got some different programming in the circuit board, the gearbox, the layout is different. Um, so it's, it, there are a couple parts that are, you know, back and forth, but for the most part, th there's not a lot of that interchanges. Okay. But all these parts would work in a vintage regular rotor if I had one that 
Correct. Uh, breathe a little life back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, if you guys got any questions about the LTR or uh, die rotor hoppers in general, leave them in the comments and we will try to get them answered or forwarded to Devin to get an answer from him. Um, and of course, go follow Die on all the social medias. Check out their website. They've always got new stuff going. Uh, something we didn't bring up in the last uh, the M3 video, which would have made sense. I've seen you guys are doing custom one of one M3 uh, pluses with people if they want. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little something different. Um, it's a it's a little extensive process, but uh, yeah, I mean you basically work with Billy Wing, who's our head head project engineer, and uh, coming up with a custom gun, and custom you know he'll work with you through the whole design process, and then um, something that we've been doing here for a little over a year now is we have a on the Dive Facebook page. There's a a tech bench where there'll be daily tech videos. About every there's a couple of videos a week where Billy will work on guns that are in for repair. Um, and then, you know, if there's one of those guns, like those um, those custom one-off series guns, um, he'll build that video, that gun on the on the live vid Facebook video. Awesome, we might have to uh, see if we can convince Joe to do a custom Lone Wolf one and document the entire process. That'd be a cool video. Yeah. So, all right, thank you to Evan for uh, coming out and doing this. We've got a couple more videos with him, so stay tuned. We're gonna go through the DSR, the R2. We did an M3 one, depending on what order these get released. and. Uh, We'll stay tuned. Follow us on the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those places. And of course, shop at lonewolfpaintball.com to buy all, all your dye requirements. See ya. Sounds good. Later.